Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about some of the hormones that help regulate and integrate our metabolism altogether. So in our first lecture, we were introduced to the pancreas because the pancreas secretes that um, this cocktail of digestive enzymes into the duodenum over here. This time, we're gonna talk about the other side of the pancreas, the other functions that the pancreas performs, which, as, which, is, is, which is as an endocrine organ. So endocrine meaning it is producing hormones. Specifically, the pancreas produces two very important hormones for maintaining glucose homeostasis, for maintaining a constant concentration of blood glucose for the body. Um, so if we look in a uh, nice detail here at this image of this histological image of the pancreas, we can see that it's pointing out two different types of endocrine cells, alpha cells and beta cells. The alpha cells of the pancreas are going to produce the hormone glucagon. So glucagon is one hormone that is produced by the pancreas. The beta, oops, the beta cells of the pancreas, they are responsible for producing insulin up here. So insulin. And now let's talk through how insulin and glucagon work together to maintain glucose homeostasis. So first let's talk about insulin. Insulin is a hormone that is going to be secreted when our blood glucose concentration has gone above its homeostatic balance. So glucose homeostasis, the concentration of glucose is at around 90 milligrams per deciliter. So this is when we're in homeostasis. When our blood glucose concentration increases, as it does up here, where we're up to 160 milligrams per deciliter, this is called hyperglycemia because the blood glucose concentration has gone above our threshold. When bl the blood glucose concentration is increased, that is going to stimulate the beta cells of the pancreas to secrete insulin into the bloodstream. And then insulin is gonna travel around the body to perform several different functions. First and foremost, the insulin is going to cause cells around the body to take glucose from the blood and take it up into their cells. So this is gonna be essentially removing glucose from the bloodstream into the cells of the body. We'll talk in more detail about how that's done once we get to the carbohydrate section of the course. But the first and most important um, function of insulin is to allow cells to take in glucose from the bloodstream. Additionally, insulin is going to inhibit other metabolic processes that would cause more glucose to go into the bloodstream. And that, that makes intuitive sense. So insulin is going to inhibit glycogenolysis. So it, glu uh, insulin is going to inhibit the liver from breaking apart glycogen to release glucose into the blood. That makes sense when our blood glucose concentration is already too high. We don't want to break down glycogen and release more. So insulin is going to inhibit glycogenolysis. And additionally, insulin is going to inhibit gluconeogenesis. And that also makes sense. Gluconeogenesis is the process of building glucose to release glucose into the bloodstream. When our blood glucose concentration is already really high, we don't wanna be releasing more glucose into the bloodstream. So insulin is going to inhibit gluconeogenesis. And remember, gluconeogenesis is gonna be taking place in the liver and as well as in the kidneys. Okay, so between all of these different processes of telling cells to take in glucose from the bloodstream, as well as inhibiting glycogenolysis and inhibiting gluconeogenesis, this is gonna lower our blood glucose concentration back to its homeostatic level, back to 90 milligrams per deciliter. So that is insulin. Insulin responds to high blood glucose concentration. Let's move on now to glucagon. So again, glucagon is that other hormone that is secreted by the pancreas from the alpha cells of the pancreas. And glucagon is uh, responsible to help manage blood glucose when the blood glucose concentration is too low or hyper, hypoglycemia, hypo for low. So we're gonna start up here in this diagram. So we start at glucose homeostasis. Um, and then we're gonna be in a situation where we are hypoglycemic, where our blood glucose concentration has decreased below our threshold. So here we see that the blood glucose concentration is 50 milligrams per deciliter. Perhaps it's been a long time since you've had your last meal. So this low concentration of blood glucose is going to stimulate alpha cells in the pancreas to release the hormone glucagon. Glucagon is gonna get secreted in the bloodstream and travel around the body to stimulate different um, reactions. So first of all, glucagon is going to inhibit cells from taking in glucose. So cells are no longer gonna be taking glucose in from the bloodstream. 
Second, glucagon is going to stimulate glycogenolysis in the liver. So the liver has this storage of, of glycogen inside. Glucagon is going to stimulate the liver to start breaking apart that glycogen and releasing individual glucose molecules into the bloodstream to help bring the blood glucose concentration back up. And then additionally, glucagon is going to stimulate gluconeogenesis. So gluconeogenesis is where we are building glucose. Glucagon is going to stimulate the liver to perform more gluconeogenesis so that the liver can release glucose into the bloodstream. And then between all of those different activities, then the blood glucose concentration is going to increase back up to our homeostatic threshold, somewhere between 70 to 110 milligrams per deciliter. So that's glucagon. Glucagon responds to low blood glucose concentration.